welcome and thank you guys so much for stopping by Galadon Gaming. Yes, we are talking about level one facing level seven and just a big difference in levels in these battles today. And I'm going to start it off with a battle from our own beloved Galamom, level nine, free to play, never spent a penny on the game, never used a gem other than the free gems she gets in the game, and apparently never watched a Galadon video on Clash Royale. So the first time I watched this replay, I was like, no, Bob, what have you done? This is, okay, this is not, all right, so unfortunately, maybe some of the fundamentals of the game she is still missing, but she's having fun, and that's what I wanted to say is, you guys gotta realize that sometimes you will face a much higher or a much lower level player that appears to be out of their range, out of the trophy range that you think that person should be in for their respective level, and it could have to do with who they are. You never know who is behind the other screen that you're playing. They could be 109, they could be nine, They, you just don't know. And the amount of seriousness, the amount of time they put into the game really varies wildly. So you never know who you're facing. So I don't know, it's just maybe a little lesson of no need to BM the people that you smash because you never know, you might be playing a nice little old lady like Gallimaw. Now, don't quote me, don't tell her that I said she was a little old lady or she will probably kick me. She is a black belt in karate, you know. But seriously, so she enjoys playing the game, but maybe she doesn't have the best skill set for winning battles. And here she is kind of, well, getting manhandled by a level five, some player four levels below her. And there's just some fundamental mistakes she's making as far as countering, as far as offensive moves, right from the beginning, from that very first drop of the minions right in front and throughout the rest of the battle. So I did get a chance to sit down with her and talk about some of the basics of the game and the idea behind putting together a push behind maybe sitting back on defense more. And I'm always going to insist that that is the way to go. Sit back on defense, wait until you can counter that push and then move forward. Also, there are basic cards that you need to use. She had a zap spell up. She had a zap as she was staring a minion horde in the face. And again, she sends a unit like a witch out by herself out onto the river. And that is not going to end well, even if she does manage to throw in some goblins and some archers afterwards. And I have to say, just the fundamental deck that she's using, maybe not the best idea. I don't see a single tank card here. And although there's some good cards, she said she put the minion horde in because she had just managed to upgrade it after saving gold for so very long because, again, she is free to play. Upgraded the minion horde, wanted it in there. She said that she didn't like her giant that much because she felt like it never seemed to survive to the tower. But I promise to sit down, take some time with Gallimom, and work on some strategy and trying to get at least one tank card into her deck at least she's dropped the rocket. That was a good sign. No more rocket, and hopefully we can get her to get some wins against some higher level players in the future. So before we get to the level one versus level seven amazing replay, I just wanted to show you one more Gallimom replay. Again, facing a slightly lower level player, this time just level nine versus level eight, but you can see that hog rider over there. She's not a fan of the hog rider. She doesn't like to use it and she doesn't like to face it on defense. And well, again, this battle is not going to go her way early on. And maybe it could be because of sending out troops down both lanes like that. But hey, come on, Gallimom has never been a gamer and doesn't even know what a tank versus DPS even means. So she's learning from the very beginning and obviously, well, not, taking the game that seriously, especially not as seriously as a lot of you tournament players. I actually don't even know if she's ever won a tournament match yet, but she's still having fun. And that's, after all, that's what this game is all about. That's what gaming is all about in general. Just having fun, passing the time, enjoying yourself, win or lose. And now maybe she's a better sport than most because for me, when I'm losing, I'm not real happy. But okay, so this time she does have a giant in there. So she at least has that fundamental deck going on. She's got the giant and she's got a pretty well balanced deck. I would take this deck to battle. In fact, I think I put this deck together for her and asked her to try it out. Now, it doesn't work out very well. She loses the tower and right here, she says, you like this deck so much, you take it over, you play, see if you can win. I'm like, wait a minute. 
You want you want me to play from here? You just lost a tower. All these units are on your king. Um, okay, so she handed me the iPad, and I figured I would see what I could do to try to turn things around. And uh, she walked out of the room laughing at me, saying that my deck was not that great. But I still like this deck. It has a lot of the fundamental cards that you need. And again, it's about saving Elixir. It's about focusing on defense. Now, right here, I know that my opponent is going to be... Now, it is my opponent instead of Gallimom's opponent suddenly. The opponent is going to come down that left lane and try to three-crown me, obviously. So much damage already done to the King's Tower. So I've got the minions, I've got the witch working here, and we're going to go ahead and clear that push right on the bridge. The Valkyrie in the way as well, so we're definitely at a disadvantage as far as where we have to battle. But as we do manage to finish that push off, we squeeze the giant in front, and that is the key right there. Every single time the bread and butter of Clash Royale, the units that just stopped the opponent's push put a tank in front of them and let them go. And that's exactly what happens. The giant gets in there, supported by the witch, supported by the minion horde as well. And now you've got a giant, a minion horde, and a witch on the king's tower. Looking good. Lots of damage. Time counting down. At least we've tied it up. Now we can't grab the three crown right here. And here comes a hog rider after our tower. Time is counting down. We've got to stop that hog rider. I got a little bit overconfident in pushing hard for the three rather than focusing on defense. So it doesn't look good right here. So much damage on my king's tower. But again, I do have the advantage of being a higher level. The giant pushing forward once again. Loving the minion horde. Still one of my favorite cards of all time. There they go. Just a few units get to the tower. Another hog rider moving in. We've got to stop this hog or it's all going to be over. Just barely going to get the hog down in time. So badly damaged is that King's Tower. This is my last chance. My last ditch push with the giant in front of the other units. 30 seconds left in overtime. We've got a big confrontation, but this time the fireball wipes out almost everybody. But the zap, that clutch zap right there finished off all of those big DPS units. Here comes the hog after my tower, but the giant, the minions all on his tower. It's going to be a race. And yes, Gallimom, I, Gallimom, we'll give it to Gallimom, takes the three crown victory and uh, just barely turns things around. All right, so here it is, you guys, the moment you've been waiting for, and this replay came from TV Royale, and specifically from Twitter. Shout out to at BKHellLTBC for letting me know about it. Yes, I do read my messages. He mentioned me in a tweet, and I checked it out, and it definitely was worth watching. Now, of course, this is not a brand new level one player at the bottom of your screen. Half of his deck is filled with epic cards. And check out the timing and the drop on the Goblin Barrel. The Goblin Barrel and the Dragon arriving at the tower at the same time. And massive, massive damage taking place. Not effectively countered. And check out the counter on the left-hand lane. That giant skeleton's bomb is going to take care of the entire push. Here comes a Goblin Barrel, but the Fireball counters it. Even a level one Fireball, very effective. And again, the massive damage down that right lane from a Goblin Barrel that was just not countered at the right time. And now the opponent with another big push, but the Skeleton Army, even at level one, is just going to chew down anything in its path if it is not countered itself. And that giant is quickly taken out by the Skeleton Army. The Dragon, the Skeleton Army, and the Witch, such great cards for taking out either individual troops or large groups of troops. Check out the Witch's splash damage there, even at level 1, doing a great job on defense. And now you can see he's getting ready to drop that Prince, and it comes down the left lane. That's right, this player already realizing that he's going to have to win this 3-2 or 2-1. There's no way that he's going to be able to stop his opponent from taking a tower down, at least it's not likely facing somebody six levels higher than you. And check out again the massive damage of the left-hand lane tower. And again, another giant skeleton in there on defense, stopping that entire pack of troops right there, the giant bomb. And he loses the tower, but the giant bomb stops from what could have been a three crown loss. On the right-hand lane, the goblin barrel did a lot of damage. Again, he's going to try to burn the giant down, but there's a bomber in behind. That's going to cause problems. The Witch helping out as well. Eventually, the Giant goes down. The Dragon, very effective, takes the Bomber out of the picture. And now the Dragon and the Witch will advance on the right lane tower. 40 seconds left. He doesn't have a tower down yet, but that left tower is almost down, and that is pressure. 
you can see because his opponent dropped a goblin barrel on defense that is a panic move and sure enough with 26 seconds left the right tower goes down the left tower is so badly damaged if he can hold his opponent off for 20 more seconds he could win this 2-1 the giant skeleton is in there the giant has gotten to the tower though and that is big problems that is a high level giant smashing that tower 10 seconds left he's fallen behind 2-1 to one. He's got to get that left tower down. There it goes with a fireball. With three seconds left, he ties it up two to two. And we go into one minute of overtime. Level one versus level seven. Both King's Towers very healthy, but check out the right hand lane. Two giant skeletons. Two, two, two are better than one. And again, a goblin barrel on defense. That is big trouble. There's a witch. There's a prince there as well. Massive damage on that tower. Goblin barrel adding insult to injury. Giant goblins on his own tower. It's going to be a race against damage. Who can get there first? It's going to be so close to the giant. And yes, the giant skeletons get the job done. And big booty Beninja grabs the 3-2 win. Level 1 over a level 7. No wonder this ended up on TV Royale. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted after that replay. That is so much fun to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Thank you guys so much for spending a short part of your day with me. I hope I made it a little bit brighter. You guys brighten my day every single day, and that's why I hope to see every last one of you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Don, you brighten my day like a sunburn. <laughs> <laughs>